Before we open up this M65, an apology to people who've been waiting for this. Let's just say I've not had a very happy buying experience. The motor arrived missing a couple of important parts, namely the lock ring and the plate that bites into the frame. Picking up the motor out of the box, it didn't feel new. There was no plastic film protection anywhere. It wasn't clean and there were chips in the paint all over and even a few dents in the metal. On closer inspection, some of the bolt heads looked like someone without the proper tools had tried to remove them. The bolt on the main housing here actually looks to be completely misaligned. At this point, I put it back in the box and contacted the supplier. And I'm not going to bore people with that story. But I will say, if you're going to order from the big import places for anything expensive, use a credit card. Because if you don't, you will have close to zero negotiating power. So, all in all, not a really good start to my M65 experience. Let's kick this off with the outside. It feels as heavy as a BBS HD. It looks more or less the same as a BBS HD, except it's got a bit of a flatter look with smoother faces. And I think it looks okay, but then looks were never really the main aim of the BBS HD. The surface area of the motor may well have been reduced a bit by the new look, so if that has an effect on cooling and motor temperature is gonna be interesting. The hole patterns for the gears are identical, and it's the same square taper for the cranks, which to me, it is a bit of a missed opportunity to switch to ISIS. One notable change is the addition of a plastic cover to where the wiring exits the controller. And that's a really good idea, and I like it. And going to that kind of effort to protect the wiring at this point makes the next part all the more confusing. Um, the wires themselves coming out the back are kind of stiff, not very good quality, and I'm not really a big fan of the Anderson connector for a battery feed. It's okay for charging, but I think it's better to use an anti-spark. And that's where it gets even more interesting because the worst is the plug that lets you or makes you use their truly awful looking monstrosity of a battery. And they're mandating that you use that with this motor. And these are tiny wires that are really exposed and they haven't even made sure that they were the same length before they crimped this connector on the end. And it looks weak. And if one of these wires fatigues, your bike's not gonna run. So, I don't know. We're gonna take these bolts off here and we're gonna see what kind of grease job they did on the main gear from the factory. I should say with these bolts now, they've gone from hex to the, uh, the torque or the torque style. Um, so it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt if you haven't got the right tool, but like you can get these anywhere. So I'm not quite sure why they made that decision. Um, the bolts themselves, they look like they once had a bit of blue Loctite on them, but they weren't tight at all. And you would expect there to be a bit of a bite when Loctite's used. This one here is um, completely, it's stripped all of the threads out of the hole. So whoever took that out or put it back in, I don't think this is a factory thing. I think this motor has clearly, clearly been apart before I got it. Um, so yeah, not, not very happy there. So with the main gear opened up, you can see that they've actually done a pretty bang up job on the greasing, which is, uh, which is excellent. Normally, or I should say normally, uh, sometimes you can get a BBS HD and there's like a tiny little smear of grease on here, but this is actually really, really good. Um, and then you have the, uh, the PAS magnetic ring here and you have the PAS sensor here and it looks like it's been thoroughly embedded in some sort of white silicone in there. Um, so I guess from here we will uh, take the cover off and we'll take the controller off and we'll have a look at what's, what's in the potting and, and how that looks there. So this is the, uh, the plastic cover and you can see that they have used blue Loctite on this, but again, all the bolts were loose. Right, there was no tightness to it, so again, either like this wasn't put on properly or it's been taken apart. So like every other bolt that I've touched so far in this motor, um, the controller ones just fell out. Um, I didn't actually notice any evidence. Oops, get some grease here. I didn't actually notice any evidence of, uh, of Loctite on those ones at all. Um, on, the, on the gasket, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice soft rubber gasket. Um, and that definitely looks like a bit of an upgrade 
on the uh, on the BBS HD, which I believe used paper gaskets for most of these. So to see a nice chunk of rubber sitting between those, um, that's definitely a good thing. Um, so I'm going to very gently undo all the connections and uh, remove the uh, the pads and the hose plugs, and then we can get a better look at the uh, at the controller itself. I did notice it does attach slightly differently to the original one. There's this additional bolt here. Um, at least I think it's slightly different from the original. Uh, I might just be getting uh, might just be getting mixed up there. So just to show you all before I uh, before I actually do this, this is pretty standard for Bafang to glue the snot out of all the connectors for the pads and also put all this uh, silicone crap all around the uh, all around the plug for the uh, for the for the hall sensors. Um, I've got these uh, these kind of pick tools which I'm going to use to very gently remove it all out and be able to unplug. Um, I did already notice though. Uh, I don't know if you can see it from here, but if you look on the inside of the controller where you've got, um, I think it's a capacitor here, this black thing, it looks damaged. It looks where it's been sticking out. It looks like it's been smashed. It's so close to the edge in the potting. It's mashed it. And you can see like a corresponding damage on the seal here where it's just mashed it into the side of the metal there. And it's actually damaged the bloody capacitor, which is just fantastic quality controller. So the controller is out and disconnected and honestly like the connections for PAS and the hall sensors look identical to the old BBS HD. In fact the controller looks pretty much identical to the last BBS HD I think. The components might be slightly different. I don't have a reference image right now to look at. But it's the same spade connectors for the phase wires. Um, not at all impressed with the way this um, I mean, it just must be an error at the factory, but this, the way it's coming out, it mashed it right into the metal part on the main frame and it's made a right mess of the gasket there too. This gasket actually, um, I think you'd have to be quite careful if you wanted to remove that because it is actually glued in in several places. But I think if you're really careful with a pick, you could probably get around that, around that no problems. Um, so that's the controller and that's the inside of the motor and it looks pretty much the same. Um, so next thing I guess is to take the uh, the core off and see what the electronics looks like with regards to the uh, to the hall sensors board. So we've got the motor core apart and it's always a bit of a pain in the butt but uh, we can see that quite clearly they're still using the, um, the nylon gear in there. You can see that just inside there. I'll take some photographs as well. It looks completely identical to how it used to be. Um, the core itself, I mean, it looks identical. It's the same IPM rotor, and it's the same helical gear here. And I honestly, I don't know if the uh, hall sensor board is different. Um, it does look a little bit different. It looks like more of the electronics are on the uh, are on the other side, uh, possibly a bit of potting, but um, it's going to need to be taken apart and analysed before we really know if there are any real changes in this associated with like the new CAN protocol that we know is now um, part of the part of the control unit. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, that's the takedown of the uh, of the BBS HD. I guess from the high voltage perspective, not much has changed. While I was recording all this, it was confirmed that the hall board is identical to the BBS HD, so there are no real obstacles I can see to upgrading. But the majority of these motor systems are probably going to get rid in stock. And from that perspective, Bafang missed an opportunity to make the motor better. I think that buying a BBS HD is a much better proposition than this M625 package. This is not a cheap motor kit. If this cost a thousand bucks, then maybe, but 1800 bucks with no choice of battery is a bit steep. So just for fun, let's compare this M625 motor package to the closest equivalent the CYC offer, which is their X1 Stealth, and see what I could get elsewhere with my $1,800. Now, before I get started, I wanna be quite clear that I was not asked by CYC to do this, and I'm not being paid to do it. Neither Bafang's motor system or the CYC one is perfect. This channel is about brutal honesty 
and I'm not going to tell people what they should or should not do with their money. But let's have a quick look at some of the differences and people can make up their own mind. So the cost of a Bafang M625 to me is 1800 Canadian dollars and that includes the battery which you have to have with this system or it won't work. And the X1 Stealth to me delivered is 1350 Canadian dollars but that of course does not include um, a battery. With the M65 you have the standard and pretty basic square wave type controller and with the CYC you get an ASI back 855 which is sine wave and it's much more sophisticated a lot smoother throttle response it's just like it, it's a night and day difference in terms of performance with the M65 you're limited to just the one display that Fang provides and with the CYC you get a choice of display options. Um, it is a bit limited if you're running 52 volts. Um, you can have the 500C uh, and the 750C I think will run all voltages. This one for me is the really big difference. Um, with the Bafang kit you required and mandated to use this um, engineered to make you smile 80s battery and with the CYC kit you can buy build your own and you can do that from 36 all the way through to 72 volts so that gives you a lot more choice a lot more versatility and it means that you can have a battery that actually fits your frame unlike the Bafang one which is actually really limiting the kind of frames that you can use this kit with when it comes to powers it's another big difference between the two kits um, on the Bafang one it's a magnetic cadence sensor and it just lets you know whether you're pedaling or you're not and on the CYC side, you actually have a, a torque sensing system. And that means that it can sense when you're pedaling, but also how hard you're pedaling. So it, it's a much more sophisticated thing. Getting the motor mounted properly has always been a challenge with the BBS HD. If you're looking to go outside of your typical hard tail, like you can see in the picture here. Whereas the CYC is a lot more flexible in terms of where you can mount it. You can put it inside a frame, you can flip it up into the frame like you can see in this picture, you can reverse it. There is a lot more that you can do with the motor. In terms of being able to, to tune the controller or tune the bike system to how you want to ride, the Fang seem to want to really lock it down and make it as limited as possible. And CYC seem to really want to try and work to make sure you can get the bike exactly to how you want to ride and they have an app on the phone that you can connect to the controller and do all that with. The final part really is, is again about the looks of the thing. Like the Bafan kit looks incredibly dated. It looks like something out of the 80s. The accessories look kind of cheap and the CYC kit is not perfect but it looks like they're trying like to make something different, something new, something that actually looks like it belongs in the 2020s. So this, uh, this motor core is going to be tested with our upgrade kit and make sure that basically it runs the same way that a BBS HD does. And this controller, if it still works in its damaged state, is going to go to a friend to see if we can get unlocked or hacked and we can restore some proper programming to the community. Because people used to program the BBS HDs to make them safer to go on trails, not to go crazy riding fast most of the time. And that fact seems to have completely escaped Bafang. Overall, I'm really disappointed in Bafang. Perhaps I was expecting too much. I love my BBS HD and I was really hoping that a design revision would make it better and stronger, not weaker with a mandatory battery and accessories that kind of belong in the 1980s. At this point, it would not surprise me if they completed the package with a pastel-coloured official Bafang shell suit. Now, these are my opinions, and if you have this kit and think it's fantastic, that's great. I've also not covered everything in this video, so if you have questions, leave a comment. Again, thanks for watching the High Voltage channel, and a big shout-out to all the guys on Discord. Cheers.